I love coaching college guys because they, you can just see them grow from kids to, to young men before, before they move on. A coach, a legend, and a mentor, Lou Olson, has died. Thank you very much for joining us on this very sad night in Tucson. I'm Pat Paris. And I'm Valerie Cavazos, working remotely. Let's get right to Jason Barr, who's outside McHale Center, remembering Arizona's legendary basketball coach, Lute Olson. Jason. Uh, good evening, Pat. Good evening, Valerie. We are here outside McHale Center by the Lute Olson statue, and you can already see an outpouring of support by the community, people coming by and dropping off flowers, cars, and candles for their beloved head coach, Lute Olson, the Hall of Famer, the community already showing its support. We're going to see in a minute from his former players as well. One such former player is Reggie Geary, who is a three-time captain on Lute Olson's teams. I sat down with Geary at McHale Center last year. He had just returned to the program as director of player development, and I asked Reggie Geary what Lute Olson meant to him. Having started with him as, as an 18-year-old, and you know, coming to my high school and then recruiting me here to U of A, you know, all the lessons as a player um, that he has not, not only given me but to hundreds of players, you know, it just plays such a major role in terms of how you mature as an individual. And um, while I was here, he gives you a sense of confidence um, um, that it, I don't know, it just kind of permeates throughout the team, and, and it's in everything that we do for over those four years. And I think that's why we had the success we had. Olson made the Wildcat team such a source of pride for Tucson and Southern Arizona. Four Final Fours, the 1997 National Championship team, his work with the Boys and Girls Club, and also Lute Olson very much a uh, mainstay here at McHale Center even after his retirement. For now, reporting live outside Lute's statue on this very somber night, I'm Jason Barr. Pat, Valerie, back to you. Jason, thank you. Tributes are already pouring in on campus and online from people who were touched by Lute Olson. Current head coach Sean Miller had this to say about Lute's legacy. Since I arrived in Tucson almost 12 years ago, I have been asked hundreds of times, what made Coach Olson so successful? Having asked his former players, coaches, and people in our community the same question, I came to a final conclusion. He had no weaknesses as a coach. Coach O will certainly be missed but always remembered by us, bear down. And Jason Terry, a member of Lutz Championship Wildcat team, tweeted this tribute tonight, saying, without you there would be no me. Rest peacefully. Well, now we're gonna take a moment to remember the life and legacy left by Lute Olson and the impact he had right here in Tucson. Lute Olson was the soul of Tucson, revered by the community, regarded as one of college basketball's greatest coaches of all time. Olson brought a sense of pride to Arizona's basketball program and to Southern Arizona. He led the Wildcats to four Final Four appearances, including a national championship and an amazing 23 consecutive NCAA tournament appearances. Yet the legendary Arizona Wildcat basketball coach didn't arrive in Tucson until he was close to 50 years old. Olson was born in North Dakota and began his career coaching high school teams, first in Minnesota, then in California. Olson taught his team to want more, to reach for a dream, and drive for perfection. He compiled a 24-2 record, his only season at Long Beach State. That was followed by the University of Iowa, where he led the Hawkeyes to the 1980 Final Four. Three years later, Olson surprised the college basketball world leaving the Big Ten power for an Arizona Wildcat program coming off a 4-24 and season. Olson made a bold statement advising fans in April of 1983 that they should get their tickets now. Two years later, Arizona was a winner. Olson turned down other college opportunities saying that Tucson was home. He would also decline offers from the NBA. I love coaching college guys because they, you can just see them grow from kids to to young men before, before they move on. His first Wildcat Final Four team came in 1988. It was a beloved group made up of not just basketball stars, but those who would be successful in other walks of life. 
like record producer Harvey Mason and baseball great Kenny Lofton and of course Steve Kerr. Another Final Four team followed in 1994. Olsen's teams were known for great guard play with players like Kerr, Damon Stoudemire, and Mike Bibby. His Wildcats were nicknamed Point Guard U. Career win number 500. He can't get it off. Simon throws it up at the buzzer. Came in dramatic fashion thanks to Miles Simon's three-quarter court length shot. Olsen inspired, motivated, and got a community dreaming that the impossible really could come true. Then in 1997, the Arizona Wildcats did what no other team had ever accomplished. They knocked off three number one seeds in the NCAA tournament, defeating Kentucky to win the national championship. North Carolina with about two minutes to Who else but Simon? No foul! No foul! They're not going to foul him. It's only right the ball's in his hands. A milestone victory for Arizona. Simon says championship. You know, we had the, the great combination of guys. You know, Bibby was a freshman and could, uh, could shoot the lights out. And Miles, you know, was a penetrator and made things happen. And uh, Jason Terry, you know, he's just a big game player. Olsen brought wisdom, drive, and love to everything he did. By Lute's side, his high school sweetheart, Bobby. The two were married for 47 years. She was known in part for her hospitality to Lutz players. The first time I met her up at her house in Ventana, she cooked me pancakes, you know, on the recruiting visit. She, this lady's incredible. I could talk to her about anything. I could come to her with my problems. She was always there for all the players. Mm -hmm. And she was like a loving parent that wasn't your parent. Right. And uh, always had a smile on her face. Never saw her angry or cross at anybody. Bobby Olson would lose her battle with ovarian cancer. Lute Olson saying of her January 1st, 2001 passing, she was the number one wife, number one mother, number one grandmother, always number one. The McHale Center Court would be renamed the Lute and Bobby Olson Court. After taking time to grieve, Olson returned the Wildcats to the Final Four later that spring. The following year, Olson was inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. His final season was in 2007, having coached into his 70s. Remarried, Olsen remained visible at games and stayed busy with his charitable work. Olsen would stay close to the program he turned into a college basketball power. His protégés would be coaching, broadcasting, even producing. Even today, I still do things and I'm trying to make him proud. You know, I'm trying to think, is coach gonna, gonna realize that I accomplished this? Will he see the hard work that I put in to get this? And that comes from, from respecting him so yeah. much and from learning so much from him. And then in 2018, the Wildcats immortalized Olsen with his own statue, appropriately in front of McHale Center. He's waving to the crowd in one arm, cradling the 1997 championship in the other. They were inspired by his drive and his heart, while the Tucson community benefited from his generosity. In the end, his accomplishments became the story of a champion, and in time, that of a Tucson legend. <laughs>